Commander, this is an unexpected pleasure. We're honored by your presence. You may dispense with the pleasantries, Commander. I'm here to put you back on schedule. I assure you, Lord Vader, my men are working as fast as they can. Perhaps I can find new ways to motivate them. I tell you, this station will be operational as planned. The Emperor does not share your optimistic appraisal of the situation. But he asks the impossible. I need more time. Then perhaps you can tell him when he arrives. The Emperor's coming here? That is correct, Commander. And he is most displeased with your apparent lack of progress. We shall double our efforts. I hope so, Commander, for your sake. The Emperor is not as forgiving as I am. We go by Jedi Joy and Jedi Rich for JediRich.com, but we just do YouTube. And we come out here, we've been documenting the stadium as it's been being built. So we just wanted to hear from you guys because you are Raiders fans from where? Yes, uh, I was born in Mexico City. Okay. I'm following them from Mexico City, LA, Oakland, and now I'm here in Vegas now. Cool. Do you actually live here now or did you come visit? No, I'll come and visit right now and hopefully in the future we can come over here in Vegas. Are you guys thinking about relocating because of the That's a good possibility. I mean, getting close to retirement and that will be an excellent place to, to live. Are you guys happy about it moving or not? Well, uh, we love, I love the Raiders. I follow them, like, like I'm saying, I mean, I was born in Mexico City. Uh, I follow them when Jim Plunkett, you know, Lyle Alcedo, um, uh, Marcus Allen, you know, and then following them to LA, back in Oakland, and now I'm over here in Vegas. Is there a team that moved more? I don't know. Actually, I think the Rams came from Cleveland. They went to Los Angeles. They went from Los Angeles to St. Louis and went back to Los Angeles. So, so we're taking the, we're like on a, who's going to keep moving more? You know, it's just the finances, but you know, it is what it is. But we love the Raiders and stuff, and we'll be here to see them hopefully more than, more than three or four times this year. So or did you just come down here because you're in Vegas today? Well, I mean, this is my Christmas present from my, from my wife, so you know, get to see the the race here and get the old. So it's it's, it's nice. All right, well, thank you. Thank you, guys. Show. So, today, we went to the Stadium Board Authority, and it's official. JediRidge.com was the first to report that the roof is delayed. Hey, everyone. Jedi Joy here from the Jedi Joy Rich Show. It is Thursday, January 16th, 2020. We're down here at the Raiders Stadium. So, earlier today at 1 p.m., we went to the... Um, wait, hold on. Are you in the street? 
Wait, I think you might be in the street. Hold on. No, just that car was. Okay, we're good. We're good. Okay, we're good. Just that, that car was went. Leave it running. That's fine. We want to make sure the that car was where he wasn't supposed to be. <laughs> Hi everyone. Jedi Joy here from the Jedi Joy Rich Show. It is Thursday, January 16, 2020. We're down here at the Raider Stadium. So today we went to the Stadium Authority meeting, um, and well, needless to say. There was a lot of things to discussed that no one had any questions about. Like they were just barreled through them. Um, and it was like a snooze fest for the people on the board. And these were very important topics, like this whole roof discussion thing. And so it was a little bit disheartening for the Jedi because we feel like uh, people don't seem to be paying attention to this roof issue. But... In better news, the stadium looks amazing, and Don Webb did say we're 80% completion. So that is really cool, and he is saying 100% they're going to be completed on time. That's what he is claiming everyone, and if you ask Don Webb anything other than that, he will get very angry, and that's what happened during the meeting. More confident than normal. Uh, a lot of reporters went up to him and asked him, and we went up there too. Major issue with uh, completion. It sounded like you said no. Maybe I could use three or four different languages. Nine. Yet. Nine. Yet. Nine. Yet. Jedi Rich went up and asked some questions, but on web supposed to be there. And maybe tell me why. We'll see if Rick Vallada is maybe there. I don't know. Well, Tommy White will be there because he sits on the board and he works for the stadium. So, <laughs> so he's got two reasons to be there. Hey guys, uh, Naked Jedi here with uh, Jedi Joy. And this is the Jedi Joy Rich Show. I'm sorry? Have you been following the stadium? Oh yeah. Are you a fan? Uh, well, I'm a Cowboys fan. I did get my tickets for here just because I know the value of that ticket. And I just don't understand how they're going to finish in time, especially now that they just announced with the roof in May. Yeah. How, how'd that make you feel when you found out about that? Confused. Very confused. What if I told you they knew a long time ago that that roof was kind of botched? Oh, they absolutely knew a long time okay. ago. Okay. Would that affect your decision to buy a ticket? Uh, no. Don't you think they should have told you, though? Yes. You're a fan, and that's very, very important to the city. Sure. Transparency is everything. Yeah. So what else have you heard about the stadium that concerns you? Just that it's running behind. Posters on my wall, Skinner, kid, and straight. Some people look down on me, but I don't get a rip. I stand barefoot in my own front yard with a baby on my hip, because I'm a redneck woman. I'm just a product of my race, and I say, hey, y'all, hey, y'all, I keep my Christmas lights on, on my front porch all year long, and I know all the words to every Charlie Daniel song, so here's to all my sisters out there keeping it country. Project. It's a legacy project. It involves today 2,000 construction workers uh, who are doing something that they know they're going to be taking their grandchildren to someday. And uh, there's a lot of sweat and hard work and emotion in a project like this, and a lot of pride in it by the workers. Is that roof delay going to going to cause any type of, of major issue with uh, completion? Major issue with uh, completion? Sound like you said no. Maybe I could use three or four different languages nine yet nine yet nine yet hundred thousand dollars real money to me and hundred thousand dollars real money to me and hundred thousand dollars real money to me and who I know some of your reporters probably make more than I probably make more than I do than I do expect it it's not new it's not new it's not new this is what people like Mortensen deal with every day Good. Don, when, when any of the structural, when any of those bolts broke, when you go to repair it, will the, will the integrity be the same as the original? Yeah, it's already repaired, and the integrity is, it, it, it's been certified by five separate teams of engineers.
research. You know, a project like this would typically have maybe two engineers working on a given thing. Uh, so, uh, you know, everyone should feel... confident than normal more confident than normal more confident than normal more confident than normal safety is, is, is the concern that I'm hearing from you. Yeah, listen. Yeah, listen. Yeah, let listen. Listen, safety is always a concern on a project like this and the fact that Mortensen McCarthy has a safety record, has a safety record, has a safety record. So you can reassure the public that the building will be safe. Absolutely. And so will the five teams of engineers, five teams of engineers, five teams of engineers and the county building department, county building department, county building Department, Stadco, the Raiders. Right, we understand yeah. that, but at the same time, the cables broke the bolts. The same engineers yeah. and the same inspectors inspected that. Yeah. And when you went to raise it, it still broke the thing. Yeah, so that, yeah. That, that, Look, that's why I'm asking the question. Have, 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 anyone who has built so much as a doghouse, 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 realizes well, that a cable. A ca a ca a ca The guy who kept blowing me off, and I'll watch the tape later, but the thing was, he kept, I kept asking about the safety of the structure of the building, and he kept telling me that Morton McCarthy has a high safety record. That's not what I was referring to. What I was saying was, is that I know that if you build a doghouse, and if you remove the trusses, and you start tampering with it, that it's going to look like, a, like one of them, like, do you remember Peter Griffith's uh, racehorse? Kind of crooked and... <laughs> I mean, you, you want it, it's going to be all crooked and stuff because you messed with the structure. Hi, Sal. How are you? I'm how are you? Oh, go ahead. Yeah, please tell us about Don um, Webb. All I'll say is uh, Don's a good man. He's doing a great job. Excellent job. I think we're lucky to have him at the helm of this. And I believe that um, what happened with the roof and the installation was um, par for the course. And I think that they handled it above and beyond. And I'll be happy to have my brand new, my brand new granddaughter sitting under that roof for the next 30 years. Excellent. 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 Go thank, Raiders. Thank you. Go Raiders. Go Excellent, my brother. Oh, oh, my, name is, my name is Jedi Rich. I know oh, you're a Jedi. Big okay. fan of you. Okay. Oh, you, you know our song? Yeah, okay. big fan of you. Cool. Well, thank you for... Well, listen, I wasn't trying to be confrontational. I really was trying to be nice, but the guy wouldn't answer the question. He started talking about dog houses. Um, everything was brought up about all of the, the delay of the roof and the overages and stuff, but it was then just brushed over like nothing. Stadco, the Raiders. Right, we understand yeah. that, but at the same time, the cables broke the bolts. The same engineers yeah. and the same inspectors inspected that. Yeah. And when you went to raise it, it still broke the thing. Yeah, so that, yeah. That, that, Look, that's why I'm asking the question. Have, 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 anyone who has built so much as a doghouse. Um, and that is, just seems crazy. And one thing that I found very interesting was that they said that all of the costs from this delay they're putting on the contractors might be a reason why they've been having uh, the cops that have to be here. So here's what's going on within the actual organization here. They have people uh, stealing from each other because they're mad because they're not getting paid or they're not getting what they want. Oh, there's an oversized load coming. Now you actually have to get out of the road. Oh. So what was interesting to me that Don Webb said is that the overages are all going to the contractors. But here is what happened. There, uh, a couple, maybe it's been a couple months back now, I can't even remember the date, there was some issues where there was police here on site because uh, some parts had been stolen. Well, those parts that were stolen were stolen from people within the crew, like stealing from each other. And the parts that were stolen were parts that were needed to lift this roof. And two of the things were uh, parts that there's only eight in the entire world. And then finally, it conjectures that the completion date may be in jeopardy if rain causes damage to interior finishes. Okay. Um, so I, okay, uh, maybe I won't say the number. So there's these pieces that were crucial for lifting of the roof and they were stolen. And not stolen like from someone not involved. They're more like held for ransom. And that's why the cops were needed on site. It's because within this crew, like 
you know, I'm not saying necessarily Mortensen all crew. I'm saying like Mortensen and the different companies, like you got the different engineer companies, the Frisnet, all these different companies. So what happened is there's a lot of things where some crews are getting mad. There, There's lawsuits going on where people are not getting paid necessarily what they want to be paid. And now we're hearing that the overages are going to the contractors. So... Uh, what happened before was the contractors weren't getting their money, so some of them stole two of the crucial pieces needed to lift the roof. And these pieces, there's only like six or eight of them in the world, and I think either six or eight of them are being used on this project, and two of them were stolen. Um, and that is why the police were here. And so the police continued to be here for a long time, and they were also here during the holidays. They staffed police here for the holidays to protect against inside jobs of stealing the, from within the organization. Um, that's where it's happening. It's not outside people. And it's because people are getting mad because they're being held responsible for things like this, putting all of this um, delay now is on the contractors. That's not really fair because it's not their, necessarily their fault. This is a lot of people were involved in this. And so um, we'll see what happens. But there's already a lot of lawsuits. And from what he said, if they're putting it all on them, I think more lawsuits are coming because that's the big issue is there's this blame game, blame game going on about whose fault is this roof issue. So that uh, was interesting today at the meeting. But a lot of stuff just seems to get just really passed over with no regard at these meetings a bunch of uh needless to say um old farts that are literally sleeping when don webb is telling them uh very crucial things and 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 just painting it with uh, butterflies and pancakes and you know uh trying to put sugar on shit and calling it a donut so that's what happened today at the meeting. But we did come down here, and the stadium is looking beautiful. So we're not trying to be the bearers of bad news here. Um, but, and, I mean, everything, it looks amazing. It smells amazing. The, uh, it, there's just a good energy down here. Okay. But, but here's the thing, you guys. This, the roof is not going to be lifted until May, they say. But here's the other crazy thing. Hey guys, uh, so the roof is delayed till May, and that was official today at the Stadium Authority Board. We went there and they talked all about the new date they're going to plan on lifting it is May, which cuts it super close to the opening day in August 2020. They want it completed by July 31st, 2020 to open in August 2020. So that's cutting it really close. And Don Webb did not want any questions of why. He just wants you all to know it's going to be on time. And he was very rude and aggressive about that, um, not just to us, especially to us, but he also was rude to Steve Wolford and anyone that asked if there was any question of, like, maybe that could be delayed. He didn't want to hear any of that noise. So uh, I found him to be very aggressive. And when I, if someone is that aggressive, I, uh, that is the sign of a liar. So today... I feel very strongly that Don Webb is a massive, massive liar, and he continues his Don Webb of lies, and I got to witness it in person as he lied to everyone. So that's that today, but as stay tuned for updates on stadium updates on JediRich.com. And you guys, other than that, we, you know, we are, we really are excited about this. Hey everyone, Jedi Joy from the Jedi Joy Rich Show. So, today we went to the Stadium Board Authority and it's official. JediRich.com was the first to report that the roof is delayed and it won't be lifted until May of 2020. So, that you guys heard first from JediRich.com. You can always get the truth at Stadium Updates and all of our daily news. Check us out there on JediRich.com and you can subscribe. Please subscribe to this YouTube. We want a thousand subscribers so we can do live broadcasts out here. And you can follow us on Twitter at Jedi Joe Rich Show, JediRich.com, The Naked Jedi, and The Alien Nick Show. 
Thanks, guys, and stay tuned um, as the Jedi just follow everyone around and annoy everyone, I guess, in this town. No, really, we just want the truth to be told. So thank you, everyone, who uh, reported the delays. Uh, there's still some concerns that we have, but uh, thanks for actually reporting the news. Hey guys, it's Jenna Joy from the Jenna Joy Show. So I'm down here at the Raiders Stadium, and this was a crazy day. We got to uh, go to the uh, board meeting, and then we came down here, and you guys, the stadium is just looking amazing. There's so much done. They got palm trees in now, and they have the, the field tray you can really see. Like, it's a huge ditch, so you can, I wish I could see. I'm sure the guys are getting an amazing view. When we were at the board meeting, we saw a really cool uh, video showing just the progress over the last two years, and it, it really is astounding. They've done an amazing job. We want to thank the crew. They've worked so hard. We don't ever want anyone to ever feel that uh, we want any negativity towards this project. The uh, Jedi are all about positivity, but we also need the truth, and we want. And we're all about safety. Safety is number one, and everyone says safety is what's most important. But a lot of times, the truth is, people f uh, focus on the money as the importance rather than the safety. And we are always about safety because Jedi don't really give a crap about money at the end of the day. We just do our thing. So more people should be like that and then we'd have no problem. It's a greed and corruption that causes a lack of safety often. So just remember that people are more important than the dollars. All right, thanks guys. What'd you forget? Get over there. Yeah. Let me let me let me let me switch my lens. Go. Hey everyone, Jedi Joy here from the Jedi Joy Rich Show. It is Saturday, January fourth, twenty twenty. I'm down here at the Raiders Stadium behind me. So we came down here because of all this whole roof issue, which I'm going to get into in a minute. But as we came down here, uh, we ran into some fans. They have been fans forever. They said, one guy said he's from Mexico and he's been a fan when the team was in LA, when the team was in Oakland, uh, both times in Oakland. Um, and now he's a fan now that's coming to Las Vegas. And we got some footage of that we'll put in the video here, as you guys will see. But we wanted to hear some input from what the fans are saying. And I asked them, you know, how they felt about the team moving. And they had all good comments about it from this group that we met down here. But I know there's a lot of negative uh, stuff going around. A lot of people don't want the team to move to Vegas. And, um, and I understand, you know, from both sides, people have concerns. And uh, that's why we came down today. But uh, we came down. It was warm. I mean, it was cold. But I started dancing. As you guys will see some footage. Most fun of everything. Ever had dancing so now I was able to take off my jacket it was actually pretty chilly out here still but I was just dancing so I'm able to be here in my tank top but I got my gloves on in a tank top because it's still kind of chilly and a, and a so it's a funny look I got going on here a beanie gloves and a tank top but I was just dancing my ass off I had a great time but anyways you guys um that's the fun stuff we're cut down here it's looking beautiful I would love to say that everything is just going great but it doesn't seem to be the case um you know if you you guys remember back in May, we had made a big deal about that they had taken down a truss. It was a roof truss. So they had to install a bunch of these roof trusses, which is behind me. They're what uh, is on the top there. And one t day, it was around the middle of May, they took one down. And we thought, that's strange. So that meant there was an issue. So we came down to check it out, and we started talking to the workers. And right away, several iron workers flat out told us that the iron workers had accidentally put a part of the truss together upside down on half of the trusses. Uh, it was a, something that was so, uh, you know, such a minor thing that they didn't notice till they had several of them up, and then they started to realize it was going to be an eighth of an inch off plumb. 
So they didn't know what to do. Well, we made a big stink about it. We started going all crazy on all social media platforms, and people called us fake news, and they thought we were insane. We got called all kinds of names, crackheads, whores, all kinds of the names, and all we reported is what we heard directly from the workers. Well, now we dropped it because everyone claimed everything was fine. The news kept saying everything's great, everything's on course, blah, 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 blah. So we said, all right. Well, fast forward now. Now we're coming into October, and they're saying, let's get the roof getting and going. And this, this thing that was already originally supposed to be started in September. Now, we're th then we say, hmm, maybe there's something going on with them roof trusses again that we've been talking about in May. And then we start hearing rumblings, oh, no, no, no worries. Well, we're good, just delayed, we'll get it done in October. Oh, we'll get it done uh, beginning November. Oh, we'll get it done by Thanksgiving. Oh, we'll get it done in December. Oh, we'll get it done in the middle of December. Oh, this and that, this and that, this and that. Now, here we are January 4th. Well, we said this doesn't seem right because they said it is no longer on a critical path. So we started raising the roof and then we decided, not an issue, let's work on the field tray. We don't need to worry about the roof. Let's just have a very airy stadium. That won't be an issue. We're opening in less than 200 days, but not a critical issue. That does not sound right to me and that's what all of the news channels locally and on social media have been reporting and especially one in particular would be review journal they keep reporting everything is pancakes and butterflies and everything is great when that's not what's going on so what's going on is at least at least eight bolts of the structural structural roof bolts okay there's only 44 Rick, Rick Vallada, he is with Review Journal, if you don't know who I'm talking about. He's the one he's talking about. He's been him and Mick Ackers, kind of the head of the stadium over there at Review Journal. And they say, oh, no worries. It just says if you're doing a home improvement and some bolts were over screwed, because they said eight bolts were over screwed and broke. Well, I said, well, it doesn't seem, if it was just little eight little bolts like you have at home, shouldn't stop the roof from being lifted. Well, now come to find out, you guys, it's eight, at least eight, at least eight. Eight is all we know for sure. Could be more of the 44 that are going to hold the roof on the stadium. Eight, at least, at least, this is what they've actually reported, which most of the stuff they've reported is, is a lot less of what is actually going on. So, okay, a much of what... Eight, eight of the 44 structural roof bolts. What that means, these are the bolts that they're supposed to attach the roof to. They're supposed to hold the roof in place. Those are breaking. And you guys, this it comes back to our story in May. When they had the roof trusses put together improperly, they were off. Now, this roof, per Don Webb, who's the head of the, whatever he does over here, he wanted to head Martin St. McCarthy guys or something. I don't even know Don's official title. All I know is that he is a Don Webb of lies. Don Webb is the COO. I've been informed Don Webb is the COO. So there we go. But anyways, title don't matter. I don't care. And, and hold on. And, and make sure I mention that those bolts, the structural bolts, attach the roof trusses to the beams. Okay. Did you say that? I don't know. I will say. So the, okay. So Don Webb. Let's start right now. And Don Webb is the COO of this project here, and he likes to sugarcoat things, I'd like to say it uh, at a minimum, and they like to act like nothing's going on. Well, what they did claim is that eight bolts broke. These bolts are the structural bolts that the roof has to be attached to, the beams. They're going to attach the beams to these bolts. These are the bolts that are breaking. Okay, hold on. The bolts attach the roof trusses to the beams. Did you say that? 
Yeah, the beam. Okay. The, raw, the bolts attach those root tusks they hung up there to the to the they attach those to the beams. They stick out a little bit and they're gonna hang them. So these bolts attach the roof trusses to the beams. These are super crucial bolts. These are not just bolts that you over tighten on accident at home, Rick Vallada. Now here's the thing you guys, this week I got a call from an engineer that used to work with NASA that he got wind of our, our video, the, the last one we had up. And he called me out of the blue just because he was worried about this stadium. He said from what he saw from our report and what he gathered himself by reading about this stadium, about what how they were going to make the roof. He read all about it from FreezeNet and everything. So this has to be no error, no error, you guys. This roof had to be 100% precise in order for it to even work, but for it to even be safe even after it's lifted. So if everything is not 100% precise with this roof, even if they get the roof up, this engineer is saying that a couple years later it could crash in if they are not making sure 100% everything is to the Nats ass perfect and right now it's not. Things are breaking. So this is a huge massive undertaking that needs to be done. This is not a oh let's just go tighten up some bolts and fix little things. This is pretty much everything about the roof needs to be replanned because now the blueprints are off. The stadium is not to the spec of the original blueprints for this roof. That is scary. And that is why an engineer called me and said, you need to contact the local uh, scientists, anyone locally that can get up there and say what is going on. Because he said, you know, I'm, I'm not there. You need to contact and I, I might do that, but I'm hoping you guys can just understand what we're saying here. We've contacted a lot of the local news, contacted non-local news. If this stadium, if they don't fix this, people could get very hurt by the stadium because if they think they're just going to, uh, how you say, Jimmy rig it, I don't know if that's uh, a term that offends anyone, but that's a term I knew growing up. If they're going to do that to this stadium, people could get hurt. And that is what they're claiming on social media, Rick Vallada. And Don Webb claimed that when the bolts didn't work, they just kicked them and, you know, just forced them and whatever they needed to do to make them fit. Well, that's not how science works. It's not how physics work. This roof is all about physics. And they've messed with the physics of the roof. And that's not something that a construction crew necessarily has any knowledge of, is physics of the roof of this stadium. And I don't either. That's why they had scientists design it. And now they have made things to make it not to what the scientists and architects and engineers designed. They started twisting and kicking and you know jamming things to fit on their own that is not safe and I don't care how long you've been in construction I don't care how many stadiums you've built they've never built this roof not the same as this one they have one similar but they, this crew didn't build it and they have not built this exact roof. And guess what? Whether they built it or not, it's not working. So you can say, oh, they have all this training and they've done this. Well, they broke it. So what do you say to that? So they need to be honest. Well, all we're asking is be honest. The roof has issues. And if they don't be honest, we're not going to have the Raiders here in 2020. If they're honest, we can get the money to get the stadium fixed. That's what everyone wants here, you guys. We don't want this stadium to fail. We want the Raiders here. But if they're going to keep lying about that, we have a roof that is not working. There's not a reason like it's not on the critical path is why it's sitting there. That's not the case. It's because they broke the bolts and they don't know what to do. 
And until people start talking about that, we're never going to fix the solution or find the solution. We're never fix the problem because everyone is saying there's no problem and we have a roof that's not being lifted. Okay, you guys, it'd be like if your realtor said, hey, got this great house. Let, let me have Mick Ecker sell it for you. It's got a great view. It's got real slick landscaping. Man, it's even got some nice suites. You can bring all your friends over. It's only got one problem. It, not, doesn't, it doesn't just not have a roof. It's got a roof in the middle of the house. So you kind of just got to walk around it, you know? And maybe we can lift it a little bit, get underneath, but I'd be careful because the bolts don't hold. So don't do too much work underneath there. But other than that, bring your friends over, have a party, have a Super Bowl. Just don't mind the roof right in the living room. Oh, and I hope it doesn't rain. Or the 120 degrees. So there we go, guys. No, but seriously, um, I'm not, this is no joke. Um, we're really concerned about this. I know everyone thinks we're just crazy. Uh, they think we're weirdos because we call ourselves Jedi, this and that. But we're being really serious. We don't want anything to happen to anyone. And um, we take this very seriously. People think that we are doing this for views or doing this um, because we don't want the Raiders to come here or we do it, you know, either, either or. It's none of that. We do it because... In May, we found out something from the crew that we thought everyone would be like, oh yeah, totally, that's what happened, let's get, the, get it fixed. But instead, we got the craziest stuff happened to us. I mean, Jairus ended up in the hospital. He got attacked. He got attacked. We got threatened. Got we got robbed. We got all this stuff just because we were speaking out on something that we didn't realize was a secret. And that's why now, um, all these months later, we were we were happy. We were like, cool, everything's on track. We're just gonna let that go. And now we have this. And once again, we're getting called fake news. We're getting called this and that. And now I have engineers that used to work for NASA calling me and saying, this is okay. Here's the clincher that got me, you guys. The issue that this engineer brought up is that when you have fluctuations in temperature is when you have the issues. And this is what we talked about, that the day that the temperature dropped 30 degrees overnight, it went from about 70 to 40, or maybe even 60 to 30, I don't remember the exact, whatever it was. But it dropped 30 degrees, and we came out here, and it was so cold. I mean, it was one of the coldest days. And that's the day that people are saying that there was some bolts that possibly broke. And Tommy White came out here and said he went up on the roof himself and everything was fine. Which, I tell you what, Tommy White, I would not want to be standing on that roof myself right now with what I'm finding out. So good on you to be brave enough to even stand up there right now because after all this, uh, yeah, anyways. But... Here's the thing, you guys. This engineer said that it's the problem when the temperature gets to about around 30, when it gets to freezing, that you're going to have issues with the steel and the metal. And this is when the things were cracking, because you're going to have, uh, as it gets colder, it's going to shrink. And here's what he said. When this happens, they have to calibrate their, um, their torque wrenches twice a day at least is the minimum. But if the temperature changes, you got to adjust them every time the temperature changes. So that day, they didn't, and I don't know if they do every day. The temperature changes a lot here in Vegas. The reason why they scheduled it to be raised in September is because it's Right, and they scheduled the roof to be raised in September because there weren't as many temperature fluctuations in September. But now as we get closer to the end of the year and now the beginning of the year is when we have really crazy weather here in Vegas from about uh, November through till March, it starts to get nice in March, but February, last February we had snow and that's when this whole thing started too. They got behind because of snow. And here's another thing. I just remembered you guys, there's a lot here. I know this is a lot I'm talking about, but there's been a lot of things going on that are being real, real hush-hush. And there's a lot of shady things going on. Back in June, uh, we came down. We didn't know what was going on. It, everything came to kind of a halt. And we had heard some rumors about some steel deliveries not coming through and this and that. Well, we're finding out now, you guys, that no one paid the steel bill. 
this stadium is not getting the funding from s several of its, it has three parts that contribute to this and two of its parts are not contributing their part. So there's not enough money right now. There's a lack of money and now it's costing more money. So steel is not being paid so workers couldn't even work for like a couple weeks or at least a week in the beginning of June. They could not work because the steel had not been paid for. And all this stuff doesn't make it to the news. They say, oh, everything's going wonderful. Go, no, things are not going wonderful. And the two people that are not paying their bill is Mark Davis and Clark County. The Clark County Fund has to finish paying their bill, and so does Mark Davis. The only person that's actually paid their portion of this bill is the NFL. And there's three parts for this. It's coming from Mark Davis, the NFL, and Clark County. So, I don't know what's going on. People are not doing their part here, and I'm hoping it, it, everything works out because we want the Raiders here for 2020, you guys. So, stay tuned. We're finding out stuff, and we're getting to you guys as soon as we can. There's just it's just nonstop with. We find more and more and more things every day. But uh, you can follow us on uh, Twitter at Jedi Rich Com, Jedi Jar Rich Show, The Naked Jedi, and Alien Nick. And then you can subscribe um, to our YouTube, the main one here, Jedi Rich Cray Producer. We're trying to get 1,000 subscribers so we can do some live broadcasts out here. We have 900 something, so we're getting really close. So thank you, everyone who's subscribing. That's really helping. And then uh, you can also, we have a couple of other YouTube channels. Those are just kind of more for our little blogs. But we got The Naked Jedi and uh, Judge Joy's blog. So, please don't think we're trying to be the bearers of bad news here, but we need everyone to know what's going on because we want everyone to be safe here in Las Vegas. We've already had a tragedy. We don't need another one. So thank you, guys. Thank you, Judge Joy. Hey, Where are you going? going? Where's your shirt say? Where are you going? <laughs> Straight to hell. Straight to hell, baby. That's right. That's right. You know what I know about hell? What? Is that hell in, in, in Greek mythology, in Greek history, right? There's this dude named Dante. And Dante had 27 different, excuse me. Dante had 27 different levels of hell. Now, depending on what, you're, what you did on earth, like, depending on how bad you were, you know, you'd go to these different levels, and, and the, the lower the level, the worse it was. You know, like, like let's say if you stole a pack of chewing gum, level one, way at the top, you know, pretty much, it's it's not heaven, it's like, it's basically like, you know, you're in Vegas, but you have to stay at the Tropicana. <laughs> but now, but now you've done some really fucked up shit. Like, let's say, I don't know, like you tried to deceive an entire nation that a stadium is not structurally sound that could collapse on 65,000 people plus two NFL teams. Now that level of hell is much lower than the people who steal chewing gum, you see? Now I don't even know where they put that. They put that down there with people who basically chop up babies and eat them for lunch. What Jay Joy was saying is if you have a Swiss watch, you can't just, oh man, shit, I dropped my watch in the pool, ma. What should I do? I don't know, give it to Dad, he's in the garage. He'll just take it apart and shimmy it around and kind of jam it around and put some little things in there and put it back. So. We're Raiders fans. Hey, Raiders, go Raiders! So that's kind of what that's about. So why are we here? I don't know, man. Maybe if, 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 if Mick Ackers and Rick Vallada and maybe some of these other reporters here in town would, would do your job, then I could go back to making the music videos and I would have to tweet you and the FBI and all these other fucking psycho bat crazy tweets all day to get you guys to notice that the stadium is not structurally sound because the contractor is a liar. So if you would do your job, then we could go out and start doing what Jedi normally do, which is have fun all day long. Oh, we might be in the street. You are in the street now. Okay, they changed it or something. I don't know. They change where the road is or something. They're in the wrong, right? I thought so. Okay, thanks. Yeah, that's what I thought. 
<laughs> okay, these people, we'll keep this recording. We are in the right. We're standing, it's just in a closed lane, but for some reason the cars keep thinking that they're supposed to drive down there because it's a little bit confusing. But we are where they're not supposed to drive, but they're thinking we're in the middle of the road, but it's just confusing because how they have the road closed, which part, which lanes you're supposed to drive. <laughs> the cars aren't figuring it out. But anyways, um, so one time, let me tell a quick story. I came down here. It was like nighttime when they had these closures, and I was in an Uber, and she said, can I go forward? I said, sure, I think so. And she drove her Uber right into one of these huge, massive ditches here at the Raider Stadium. I was like, doo, doo, doo. I'm like, oh my goodness, I can't believe I just told the Uber driver to drive. And then luckily the guys were able to get her out, not any damage, but hey, thanks. But yeah, you got to watch it if you come down here because they're always changing the roads down here and stuff and there's open ditches and stuff, so be careful. I was trying to be nice, but the guy wouldn't answer the question. He started talking about dog houses. Not to doubt, I'm not impressed. I'm not amused, I'm not confused, I'm not to do. I'm a grown man business, I am not in school. Put your hand down, youngin', this is not for you. I'm a jail, my deeds with the Kanye, yo. Name on the market, your name off the payroll. Style fresh, like I'm still a day, yo. And it's been like that since the day, yo. On more time than a Rolex or Senko. Step on deck, your neck, or do what I say so. Get up and get out, get down. Get down. Let's move. Shout out to my man Kelly Kwame. We are through. Shout out, shout out, check it out. Check it out.